60 Minutes Sports Correspondent Armin Katayan here to preview more uh, of what we will see. Armin, great to see you. Nice to see you, man. Um, earlier this month, Patty Crawford tells CBS This Morning the school essentially set her up to fail. What more then did she share with you as a regard of that? Well, some of this didn't get in our piece, even though the piece right now stands at about somewhere between 25 and 28 minutes. It's Remarkable. one of the longest pieces I've ever I've ever worked on. Um, beginning with the fact that she never met Art Bryles. She's the Title IX coordinator at Baylor University. She had asked one of the senior vice presidents to set up a meeting. Uh, that meeting never took place. Um, she asked for, um, in terms of investigations, she asked for access to university-issued technology, meaning iPads or cell phones in some cases, where she could then track mm -hmm. to see whether videos existed mm -hmm. or whether there was communications about an, an alleged event. And then, um, she was. Um, she wanted to get to uh, Waco Police de uh, Department reports, and was and when she made that request, uh, she got an email from a university vice president saying that those uh, were off limits. That she could be um, apprised verbally of what was in those reports, but she could not have the actual report itself. Which, if your job is to investigate. Title IX or sexual assault or violence or discrimination, it's, it's difficult to operate without, any, without well, any paper. And it seems institutional stonewalling is one thing. When it's working hand in hand against law enforcement, certainly in the town, it seems as though this was over before it began. Well, the narrative now coming out of Baylor is, um, according to the senior vice president, Reagan Ramsauer, who I interviewed, is, is that this was the police department's fault, that the reports would come into the police department and they would simply either be, um, they would disappear mm -hmm. or, or they just never moved up the chain. That's a little hard to believe that somebody would not report it to the senior vice president of public safety, who Mr. Ramsauer uh, is and was at the time. Um, but that's, yeah, Josh, you're right. I mean, that seems to be the narrative now is we're going to accept the, the, the we're going to admit to victim blaming. Um, we're going to say it was the police department. But on the other hand, they're pointing the finger at our Bryles, too. And my question is, 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 is how, how much is Art Browse supposed to know if he's never met the Title IX coordinator and all these reports are dying in the police department? We're seeing convenient scapegoating as well. And something that, you, a point you make here, it would almost be easy to see they're protecting the football team. They're protecting the Baylor Bears brand. But there's more at play here. Yes, I think this is the convergence of two um, very powerful forces. As you mentioned, we both know the football teams are the front porch of a university, the uh, donors, potential for decreased enrollment for mm -hmm. a scandal, um, the brand, which is so important. But then at Baylor, you have this other force, which is the, the history of that school. It's the largest Baptist university in the country. Um, there's a very strict code of conduct regarding premarital sex, which is n verboten and no alcohol. So now when the, when the victims, uh, alleged victims come forward, they're faced w with that kind of issue, where in one case, even at the student counseling center, a woman, the first question she asked of one alleged victim was, what were you wearing and were you drinking? So um, it's, a, it's a powder keg in a lot of ways, and it, and it, and it worked against um, dozens and dozens of women over time. Well, it, and there is a sense, too, that, sim that perhaps just the, the mere existence of a, a system that seemed to blame the victim as often as it might have a perpetrator, that that, that, that brought silence, that that brought a collective silence. I mean, oh, absolutely. We, we, we've seen that time and again as well. Oh, yeah. The women were afraid to come forward. Yeah. I mean, in a lot of cases, they just didn't press charges because they knew what they were facing. But at Baylor not pressing charges and the existence of police reports, whether they were in Baylor PD or where they were in Waco PD, as we discovered, um, we were considerable. There were a number of cases, including a, um, an alleged gang rape by two players, um, uh, where no criminal charges were filed. Uh, but that doesn't mean that a university doesn't investigate and doesn't try to get to the bottom because those players are on your team. Um, and in the case of one of their players who was um, alleged to have done something and got off with a very um, uh, a, a, a short sentence, um, he is now on trial again for, for uh, alleged rape. There were four producers working on this story and we've spent months on it. And it's, you know, you talk about a narrative, this is a narrative. Remarkable stuff uh, to be sure. Great to see you. You too.